I visited what may be the largest worm farm in the world, but the main function of this place isn't to produce worms or worm castings, and chances are you've never heard of it. If you want to find out, stick around for this video. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. In 2020, during the height of the pandemic, I visited the largest worm farm I've ever seen. But this worm farm's main product isn't worms. It's not worm castings either. It's clean water. Biofiltro uses huge beds of wood chips, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and composting worms to process wastewater from large-scale agricultural producers like wineries and dairy farms. Their water filtration systems range in size from a 20-foot shipping container to multiple 44,000 square foot outdoor beds like the kind I visited in Royal City, Washington. This particular system is installed on a dairy farm that houses over 13,000 head of dairy cattle. Now in the worm world, manure is a popular feedstock, but typically not manure from pigs or dairy because the manure is so liquidy. Most vermicomposters who use manure opt for horse manure, rabbit manure, and more solid manures from other animals. If you've heard of worm power in Avon, New York, they process that liquidy dairy by first running it through a solid liquid separator, sending the liquid fraction called effluent to a lagoon while composting the solid manure before feeding it to worms in their continuous flow bins. Biofiltro also processes dairy manure, but after passing through the solid liquid separator, large solids are removed and composted to produce bedding for the cow stalls and to share with local farms, because it's the water they're after. To understand the biofiltro system, it helps to first understand how dairy farms normally use lagoons to manage their dairy manure and effluent. So hang with me. When the watery poo is pumped into these lagoons, a small fraction of the material separates into heavier solids which make their way to the bottom and the liquid fraction remains above. The solids that settle out in the lagoon are digested anaerobically, producing ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, methane, and carbon dioxide. The sludge can eventually be used to fertilize cropland and the wastewater can be used to irrigate farmland as well. But the water is still considered waste, and the nasty pathogens, excess nutrients, and the remainder of the suspended solids and volatile solids in the water need to be taken care of before the water can be considered clean. That's where biofiltro comes in. Using massive pumps and valve systems, wastewater gets pumped from the lagoons into a small equalization tank that helps them control the flow into one or more of their seven massive beds. At the bottom of these beds are 50 rows of pipes. Above those pipes is a one foot layer of gravel, and above this gravel is a three foot layer of wood chips, worms, and bazillions of invisible bacteria, fungi, and protozoa waiting to clean the water. Like traditional wastewater treatment plants, it's the bacteria that do most of the cleaning by breaking down volatile organic matter and removing nutrients like nitrogen from the wastewater. Biofiltro is no different because bacteria are at the heart of their water cleaning installations, but they also use worms to consume the suspended solids that remain in the water. The worms also graze on the microbial biofilms in the system, which means that unlike other wastewater treatment systems, they don't produce sludge. The result is that after only four hours of irrigation, that water is considered cleaner, with over 80% of the volatile solids removed and 70 to 90% of the nutrients removed. From there, it gets pumped into a huge holding lagoon, which isn't quite drinkable, but clean enough for the farm's owner and the former CEO of Biofiltro to go water skiing in. Another huge environmental benefit is that the methane emissions that otherwise would have been produced in the holding lagoon are avoided by aerobically degrading the volatile solids in the Biofiltro system first. Working together with carbon registries, Biofiltro is able to quantify the annual greenhouse gas emission reductions their system is responsible for. The equivalent of 35 to 40,000 tons of carbon emissions have been avoided every year since the biofiltro system was installed at Royal Dairy. These emission reductions go through a validation process that involves careful modeling of the dairy's manure management practices both before and after the biofiltro system was installed, and they go through constant ongoing measurements day after day. By doing this, the project can generate carbon credits that help finance the expense of building these huge installations. Okay, so back to the worms. When I walked around and through these worm beds, I was fascinated. While some parts were dry and worm-free and seemingly hadn't been irrigated for days, other parts had a rich, dark color and were absolutely teeming with composting worms that were happily munching away on the sticky muck in the beds. I picked up some handfuls of material that was as dense with worms as I've seen in a regular worm bin. One weird contraption caught my eye. A giant rake on wheels that looks like it came out of a Star Wars movie set. One issue that Biofiltro has, especially in 
in the arid central Washington climate is that the tops of the warm beds dry out considerably and they form a solid crust which detracts from the bed's ability to actually filter the water. So the CEO devised a huge, I'll just call it rake on wheels, wide enough to straddle the 65 foot beds that drop tines down into the surface to break up that top crusty layer. And no, they didn't let me operate it as part of the tour. There were some other things on that tour that I found super interesting. And I'm sorry, but none of these have anything to do with worms. So again, just hang with me. The first thing is that the cows walk themselves into the milking facility dozens at a time all at once, each of them finding an empty stall where workers attached about six of the, I don't know what they're called, but I'm gonna call them udder suckers, onto the cow's udders. After a few minutes, the cows kick off the udder suckers and make their way back out into the barn. Now, how do they know when to come into the milking barn? Are they wearing little shockers or is there some sort of a bell that tells them it's milking time? These cows are on such a precise regimen that they know their udders are full right around the same time and they know where to go to relieve the pressure. When one of them feels it's time to visit the place with the udder suckers, it stands to reason that the rest of that group do too. When that bunch of cows is done getting milked, a few minutes later, the next shift of cows has gotten that same full bladder feeling and makes their way into the milking facility. Two things were really remarkable on my visit it to Royal Dairy. The first thing that stood out is that 80 acres of the 320 acre facility is dedicated to manure management. Only about 10 acres or 3% of the facility is dedicated to actually getting the milk. The rest is for housing the cows, raising the calves, preparing their feed and handling their poop. And finally, it's worth acknowledging that Royal Dairy is a concentrated animal feeding operation or CAFO. Places like this are one of the reasons we can get milk so cheaply, but they're understandably controversial for the conditions under which these animals often live. But I found it remarkable how much effort was spent keeping these animals happy, or at least as happy as one can be living in such a dense population. I really think Royal Dairy has not only the environment in mind, hence their relationship with Biofiltro, but the happiness of their cows as well. And as my tour guide explained, happy cows produce more milk. Now, why did I actually travel all the way from Philadelphia to Seattle, then take a three hour drive out to central Washington? Was it really because I wanted to tour one of Biofiltro's largest facilities out of curiosity? That was nice, but the real reason was that I was interested in their worms and their worm castings. You see, about every 18 months, these beds need to be cleaned out because the buildup of worm castings and the breakdown of the wood chips require that the beds be reconstituted instituted with fresh material. So when Biofiltro needs to clean out Royal Dairy's beds, it means that there are about 20,000 cubic yards or about 12,000 tons of worm-rich material and worm castings that need to be processed and screened. And Royal Dairy is just one of Biofiltro's installations. They've got dozens of them, mostly in California, Washington, and other Western states. At the time, I couldn't make a commitment to process their material for a few reasons. One, I just lived too far away to try to manage a large-scale screening and bagging operation of this magnitude. Two, I couldn't promise that I could sell all this material in a timely fashion at a decent market price. When you're dumping over 10,000 cubic yards of worm castings on the market at one time and doing it at multiple locations, you become your own worst enemy in terms of price. You've got to process and store that material before the sun dries out and degrades the biology in the screened end product. And finally, this stuff in the biofiltro beds is really sticky, and sticky material does not sift well through a trommel screener. It would have been very difficult to dry it out enough to separate the worms from the worm castings and the wood chips. And I would have needed to rent one or several large trommel screens at a cost of likely tens of thousands of dollars and hired local labor to do it. So this wasn't for me at the time, but my bulk supplier of worm castings and I have remained in contact with Biofiltro about how we can work together again in the future. Okay guys, I wanna thank both Biofiltro and Royal Dairy for hosting me. It was fascinating to see how the power of worms and microbes can be harnessed at an absolutely massive scale for an absolutely awesome reason. The world needs clean water and it needs more worms. We'll see you next time.